welcome back to our channel ladies and gentlemen kindly subscribe to our channel trouble is brewing between the Azimio leader Raila Odinga and the Kenya Kwanza leader William Samoei Ruto in fact I'm one person who now believes that William Ruto is incorrigible he cannot change you see a few days ago we saw them together with Raila and many were thinking that they have formed a, a kind of uh, unity and Raila will be silenced and I think even in their side they thought that uh, once they come together and people see them together in camera maybe the country the tension will, will, will come down but even if you wanted to help William Ruto you can't just help him because this administration is full of mischief. The pending bill in parliament that seeks to increase the VAT on fuel is one that is really rubbing shelters, the, uh, rubbing Kenyans the wrong way. And after listening to pleas and cries from his supporters, Raila Odinga called a press conference and he condemned this bill and in fact he told William Ruto to prepare that should they pass this bill because they've got the numbers in parliament then the Kenya Kwanza regime must prepare for a duel because the Azimi will have no option but to rally all the stakeholders to rally all Kenyans to reject this bill Raila says Ponda Amechoka the donkey is just exhausted. We all understand that this regime pledged during the campaigns to reduce the cost of living. What we are witnessing now is a shadow of the people who are campaigning. I look at what is happening in the country and then I look at President William Ruto and his deputy Gedi Shagwa and I'm really confused. Listen to what Raila said. It is clear the so-called public participation is being invited is a mere charade and a gimmick to give Kenyans false hope before they are hit with a tsunami of taxes beginning July. As Ruto was speaking on Sunday, the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority had just raised the retail fuel prices by Kenya shilling 3.4 for the super petrol, shilling 6.4 for diesel, and 15.19 for kerosene. The Kenya shilling itself also continued this free fall against other major currencies. The rise in the price of fuel and the continued fall of the shilling means the cost of everything goes up again. You know it's funny that even before this bill is passed already the energy and regulatory authority has increased the prices of fuel. You can imagine that they have not even passed this bill. You go to the supermarkets and you realize that the prices of sugar have also been increased by 100, by 100 shillings in a week. And we have not yet passed that bill. And Raila says there that uh, we are being hoodwinked by the calls for public participation. You all understand that if they, would, if they subject this bill to public participation, it will not pass. Because there is uproar, even from Ruto's backyard, from Rigeti Gishagwa's backyard. And Raila tells them that Punda Amechoka, they will not accept this. And I'm wondering why Raila is being kind to this administration. We had started the rallying call to mass action. Because over the world, it has been proved beyond reasonable doubt that the only language that powers that be will listen to is the mass action. 
demonstrations. I wonder why Raila decided to suspend the demonstrations. It is now calling upon the government to reduce the cost of living, to rethink about the bill that is in parliament. Because as he admits there, yes, it's high time we looked at the policies regarding our taxes. But even as we look at the policy to review the policy about taxation, we cannot be increasing taxes at a time when people don't have jobs. At a time when the cost of living is already high, the cost of electricity, of education, everything is just too high. A few weeks ago we were told that they have uh, given millers the green light to import duty-free uh, maize. And this was to at least elevate the pressure and bring down the cost of unga. If there is anyone who has seen the cheap unga that the Kenekwaza team keeps on talking about, please tell me. Because to the best of my knowledge, there is only one company that uh, is retailing at one 58 or something. And I understand from close, uh, close sources that the millers are reluctant to take this offer. Because if anything, we would have seen an avalanche of millers, you know, importing duty free maize. And if that had happened, then we would have uh, completely reduced prices of unga. So this is not happening. Yet they're increasing the prices of food. And you know, if this happens, ladies and gentlemen, then let us prepare for even tougher times. As we speak today, I know of families that cannot afford two or one meal in a day. I know families who are really finding it difficult to take the children to school. Yet, you want to add more burden to them. It is my conviction that people should go back to the streets. It is my conviction that the government cannot willingly give people the freedom, the economic freedom that they promised. It is my conviction that the government can only be but compelled to do that which the will of the people demands. Because Raila gave certain demands and he's saying that even the Kenyan shilling is weak the government keeps on comparing the Kenyan shillings to the dollar. But Raila says that it is not only the dollar. He says that late last year, the, 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 the Kenyan shilling had started falling compared to that of the Tanzanian shillings. So you can imagine that our shilling is getting weakened by the day. Where are we heading? And I'm really getting perplexed because this is a government that came in on a golden platform. They had a plan. Even if you listened to William Ruth during the recent uh, interview, they seem to have a big plan. And a friend of mine was telling me that maybe they have a big plan on paper, but the implementation is a mirage. They have plans to build dams. But where is the money coming from? This, the little money that have been given are still getting into people's pockets. They've got plans to give uh, subsidized fertilizers, but sometimes drought does not even allow the plants to sprout the seeds. So they seem to be have an ambitious plan on paper, theoretical. And uh, the last time I checked, William Ruto was a scientist. Scientists are not people who really peg their arguments on theory. They believe in pragmatism. And I wonder what really is wrong with this government. And Raila says that there are several Kenyans who have been detached from the development programs and they feel like they are not part and parcel of this government. And so ladies and gentlemen, as Raila says, and he puts it rightly so, that the Kenya Kwanza team, should they pass this bill, then they must prepare for a bigger fight because the Zemi government, the, the, the Zemi fraternity will rally their supporters and other stakeholders to reject this government. But let me ask you a question. How realistic is this? Because we were on course going for demonstrations to compel the government to do that which they had been given. 
But after the agreement about the bipartisan talks, Raila suspended this. And now he's saying that he will rally people again. What will that help when it has been passed in parliament and it becomes law? Because to the best of my knowledge, we should intensify the fight before this bill is passed. Because when it is passed, it will become law and anyone who will be reacting or acting against it will be deep to be breaking a law. And I think this is the time. The Kenya Kwanzaa has got the numbers. And if this bill goes to parliament, they can assure, I can assure you, it will take them less than 10 minutes and it will be passed. Already you've seen a very crazy U-turn from the people who opposed such a bill some years ago. People like Ndindi Nyoro, who is now heading uh, the budget committee. Kimani Ichungwa, who is the majority leader. William Ruto himself. These are people who opposed this bill and they had indicated during the previous regime that we could not overburden Kenyans because Kenyans were already feeling the pants of the burden then, economic burden. Now they have made a U-turn and they all of a sudden see something good in this bill. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time. If we don't act now, then Kenya is headed to, we, we are going to plunge into the deepest economic pit that we won't be able to come out of. And so, I want to urge the Azimio not to relent because it will be an injustice to their followers. Mapema do best. Let us push this government and compel it because the power belongs to the people. I don't know what to think, but that is my take.